declaration to invest in the Caribbean. That from Prime Minister Chrissy in London. I'm Clint Watson. The story's ahead on the Bahamas tonight. The murder trial of Donna Vasily got underway in the Supreme Court today. The details straight ahead. And then a blessing and a pressure check. We take a closed circuit look as a new facility opens up. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie hits a home run with the international business community on investing not only in the Bahamas, but also the Caribbean. Good evening, everyone. I'm Chris Saunders. And I'm Charisma Robinson. As he delivered the keynote address at the inaugural Caribbean Investment Summit in London, England this morning, Prime Minister Christie offered examples of what the Bahamas has done to secure its place as a leading CARICOM nation and one of the best places to invest. It's just one of the steps government has taken to help to bolster the economy, create jobs, and continue to make the country a world-class destination, not only for leisure travel, but business as well. Clint Watson has more from London. If there has ever been a good time for an investor to take advantage of investment opportunities in the Caribbean, it is now. Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie says the Caribbean is experiencing steady growth exceeding tourism predictions of 4% in 2014 to 7% with an even further increase forecast for this year. He says it makes the investment climate ideal. The climate is indeed ripe for inward investment in the region, which has redoubled its efforts towards implementing energy and fiscal reforms, promotion of investment incentives, strengthening of compliance frameworks, and continued redress of social ills in the wake of the global economic crisis. The Caribbean region as a whole provides competitive advantages of accessibility, as you've heard, economic and political stability, adequate labor supply, modern infrastructure, robust investment incentive frameworks, and trade facilitation with some preferential access to markets through its trade agreements with Europe, the United States, and Canada. The Prime Minister pointed out that tourism is expanding into non-traditional markets. The new trend includes sports, religion, medicine, and culture. Yet still there's other areas aside from tourism suitable for investment. Foreign investors are now venturing in previously unexplored sectors of our economies, in natural resources, infrastructure, manufacturing, real estate, transport, telecommunications, energies, stem cell research, medical tourism. Using the Bahamas as examples in his description of the region's readiness for investors, he shared the innovation of public-private partnership as an emerging trend to investment in the region. Mr. Christie says we're 60% of our population under the age of 30 and a propensity among our youth for the pursuit of excellence in sports, art, music, and cultural endeavors. We must find ways to invest more in the creative industries that can feed into our main economic pillars and develop sustainable linkages across sectors of our economy. The tourism sector and its niche industries will continue to be the engine of economic growth, employment, human capital development, industry diversification, and business improvement for most of the 40 million citizens of the Caribbean. And with crime a concern in the region, Mr. Christie assured investors that the region is doing all it can to ensure the safety and security of those who invest. At the 2015 Caribbean Investor Summit in London, Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. The trial for 55-year-old Donna Vasily got underway in the Supreme Court this morning. She's on trial for the murder of her husband, internationally known podiatrist Dr. Philip Vasily, that happened in March of this year. LaDawn Davis was in court for the proceedings, and she tells us several witnesses took the stand. 
Inspector Alfred Dean of the Crime Detective Unit was the first to give testimony in the Supreme Court on Thursday morning. While being cross-examined by Prosecutor Attorney Neil Brethwaite, Inspector Dean told the court that he conducted inquiries at a resident at Old Fort Bay on March 24th. It was at this time Inspector Dean says he received information from Inspector Johnson on an alleged homicide and was escorted to the home of the deceased male, where he videotaped the exterior and interior of the crime scene. Dean says he returned to CDU and later signed in sealed the videotapes and handed them over to Detective Sergeant Evans. One of two of the videotapes were also revealed in court. Inspector Dean says blood was splattered near the entrance to the kitchen patio, on the floor, on a knife, on the bottom of a glass, a door handle, the wall, and a chair. Additional blood stains were also found near the kitchen area. Visible foot trails of blood led Inspector Dean to the body of prominent podiatrist Dr. Philip Vasili, who was face down in a pool of blood on the kitchen floor in his navy blue shorts and a white t-shirt. The second witness, Detective Sergeant Gerda Roll, says he went to the RAND lab that same day and spoke to pathologist Dr. Sands, who gave him further instructions. He says the deceased had abrasions to the left abdomen. After taking several photographs, Sergeant Roll says he collected several samples of the deceased, which contained fingernail clippings, blood samples, urine samples, and clothing which were sent to the forensic lab. The victim's niece, Aiden Camp, and Old Fort Bay security officer Cassius Powell also gave brief testimonies. Attorneys Muriel DeSeal and Elliot Lockhart QC represented the defense. Now the case has been adjourned to Friday morning at 10.30 a.m. LaDawn Davis, ZNS Network News. Police arraigned two suspects for murder this morning. In the first arraignment, 23-year-old Perry Pickering of West Street was charged with the murder of Clifford Cartwright an attempted murder of Marcelo McKenzie, which occurred on July 26, 2015 at Meeting Street and Blue Hill Road. In the second arraignment, 21-year-old Ashley Heald of Nassau Village was charged with the murder of John Frazier in the Gibbs Corner area in August. Both men were not required to enter a plea and have been remanded to the Department of Corrections until November this year. Today is World Suicide Prevention Day. and Here in the Bahamas, the pain that suicide brings felt intimately in a community here in the capital. According to statistics from the 2000-2013, the Bahamas has experienced a 2.1% increase in the rate of suicide. Vaughn Aubrey went to the scene of a suicide this morning. A sad day for members of this close-knit community of 8th Street, Coconut Grove. It was early this morning that a passerby found the body of a 35-year-old father of two hanging from this palm tree. On 8th Street, Coconut Grove, when police arrived on the scene, they met the lifeless body of a male hanging from the tree. Um, the man was pronounced dead on the scene. He's an adult male. We don't have no identity on him yet. We do not have a motive as to what might have happened, but we know he was hanging from a cord to, to, from the tree. Um, we are in the initial stage of our investigations, and an autopsy will definitely have to be performed to determine the exact cause of death. And that father of two was identified by family members as Cephas DeVoe Jr., a man who reportedly just found a construction job. They were alerted to the shocking scene by a passerby and believed that DeVoe was hanging from overnight. Dean advises family members to be alert for signs of stress and depression. It is no good to keep it to yourself. It is paramount and it is very important that you share with some family member. If you do not want to share with your family member, share this with them. Um, find a pastor. I think that the, the, a religious leader and they, some of the best people that you can find or find a counselor it is very important because you will continue to be in isolation. Then we want to have a warning out to family members. If you see these things happening, people are being withdrawn. People have all of a sudden begin to drink heavily. Um, people are talking about death. People are talking about killing themselves. They're talking about there's no use that I need to be in this life anymore. They are red flags, warning signs that you need to reach out to some professional that we might get some help to possibly avoid situations like this from happening today. An ACB dean wants family members to act when loved ones show signs of withdrawal, as one life lost to suicide is one too many. Reporting from 8th Street, Coconut Grove, I am Vaughn Albury, ZNS Network News. Thanks so much, Vaughn. And with the day being observed as World Suicide Prevention Day, stakeholders partnered in a forum with their goal of preventing suicides. Carla Palmer was there. 
Over 800,000 people globally die of suicide each year, with the Caribbean region accounting for some 65,000. Globally, there are more suicides than homicide and traffic fatalities annually. Most are between 15 to 29 years. That's why the One Day Symposium serves as an essential tool, giving information and skills to participants to better recognize and prevent suicides. At limiting access to common means of suicide like poisons or firearms can have an effect in lowering the rate of suicide. And the awareness that those who have attempted suicide at least once are by far at the highest risk of committing suicide or attempting suicide again. Deputy Manager of the Public Hospitals Authority, Mrs. Hannah Gray, underscored the importance of early detection and response to the problem. According to the International Association of Suicide Prevention, the act of showing care and concern to someone who may be vulnerable to suicide has been shown to make a difference. Suicide is ultimately a preventable public health concern. Dr. Jerry Ackermans of the Pan American Health Organization calls the country's suicide rate alarming and suggests a local policy on mental health. She highlighted a recent study carried out by PAHO, the Ministry of Health and Education. It shows that in the Bahamas, one in ten boys and two in every five girls between 13 and 15 years old made a plan to commit suicide. I'm repeating this, 10% of all boys and 40% of all our girls between 13 and 15 uh, have made a plan, it's not only thinking, to commit suicide. These are dramatic, dramatic numbers. Two out of five young people have seriously considered attempting suicide and nearly 14%, 14% have attempted suicide over the last year. Health officials say persons at the greatest risk for suicide are alcoholics, those suffering from mental illness, sexual and emotional abuse. Carla Palmer, ZNS Network News. This portion of the news is brought to you by the new Shell and Letter, designed for extra miles. Commonwealth Bank has great offers for back-to-school and vacation loans to help you get prepared this time of year. But this year's Summer Madness Specials are truly worth celebrating. At Commonwealth Bank, I was approved for an education and vacation loan. And I also signed up for a savings account with 5.5% interest. Loans to help with tuition, uniforms, travel, and more. Come celebrate Summer Madness Specials with us. Commonwealth Bank, leader in personal banking services. The Bahamas Basketball Federation is an organization that believes in young behaviors. And over the years, BTC sponsorship has been unbelievable. At BTC, 100% of Bahamian communities deserve 100% of our support 100% of the time because you deserve it. The KFC Prize Patrol is on the move and looking for you. Make a qualifying purchase at any KFC NASA to receive your I Love KFC sticker. If the Prize Patrol spots your sticker, you can instantly win fabulous prizes. Ten lucky red tickets are up for grabs. All for a chance to win a 2015 Mercedes CLA from Tire Flex Star Motors. Plus, one lucky winner will receive a golden ticket and win $1,000 cash. The KFC Prize Patrol is on the move. Our next winner could be you. Every time you look at me, I go really, really red. Thank you for showing me that. It's okay to be weird. She's the most positive, energetic, crazy person. You're always there for me, despite the arguments, the fights. This is for Andrea, my old art teacher. With my little brother, Dante. Jamie, I'm going to share this coke with Megan. I'm going to share this coke with Holly. And that's Holly. And that's and I'm Megan. Megan. In today's world, things are constantly changing. So the one thing you can depend on to stay the same is quality, savings, and value. At Solomon's, you'll get real savings with unbeatable prices on everything your family needs.
elements. Real quality, real savings, real value. Some may look at us and wonder, what makes Bahamians think we're so special? After all, on the surface, we look just like you. But deep down, we couldn't be more different. Here you'll find no mountains, but we ain't need them, boy. We've got the deepest blue hole in the world. We're proud to swim, sail, snorkel, and dive in these seas. These 700 islands and keys may be scattered, but no one's more connected than us. We're proud people with patriotism pumping through our veins. Regatta, rake and scrape, homecoming, Junkanoo, there's a lot to love about the Bahamas, and Kalik is one of them. So here's to the things that make the Bahamas the best little country in the world. And here's to the bear we drink to celebrate that. Kalik, the bear of the Bahamas. Share your pride. This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Officials at the Straw Market Authority are investing in security at the straw market and looking after the health of those who actually work there. The Deputy Prime Minister and National Security Minister were on hand for the commissioning of the new nurses station and surveillance fire safety facility at the market. Clea Matcha Murphy has more. Officials at the Straw Market Authority are seeking to make the downtown straw market a safer place for vendors and customers by investing in a new nurses station and surveillance fire safety facility. Deputy Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis, along with the Minister of National Security the Honorable Dr. Bernard Nottage, attended the commissioning Thursday. Davis says the addition of the CCTV surveillance cameras, along with a surveillance unit, shows the authority's commitment to promoting the health and safety of vendors and clients. We are confident that this innovation will assist in combating crime and the elimination of unscrupulous activities in this market. To complement the surveillance system, the public address system assists with common communication and the articulation of policies, regulations, and changes propagated by the Straw Market Authority. Davis says a trained clinical nurse will be on duty seven days a week at the nurse's station when the market is opened to give assistance until an ambulance arrives in the case of emergencies. The nurse will also be available for routine screenings. In promoting the health of clients, the authority has renovated the bathrooms and installed industrial hand blowers. This area is critical to preserve the sanitation of the market so as to minimize the possible transmission of diseases. Dr. Nottage, who also addressed vendors, says he has received daily complaints about security at the rear of the straw market, making the surveillance unit an essential addition. He added that many of the vendors have intimate knowledge of devastating effects of fire following the blaze at the previous straw market 14 years ago. This is built for you. You are the owners of it. It is up to you to preserve it. I'm not sure what fire safety instructions you have been given, but for God's sake, do not do things that you know will put at risk all this investment the millions of dollars of investment you have in this building. With the new facility, officials say they aim to create a safer environment for the people who visit and the vendors who spend their days at the straw market. Cleopatra Murphy, ZNS Network News. Almost eight months after being damaged due to an arson attack, the mail dormitory at the Bahamas Agriculture and Marine Science Institute is about to be demolished. That would make room for a new facility to be built. Agriculture Marine Resources Minister the Honorable V. Alfred Gray telling ZNS News that he expects that to happen very soon. This comes after it was discovered that the contractor conducting the work had no insurance. Gray did not disclose the contractor for the phase of the work. The Ministry of Works has commissioned a contractor to demolish that building. Uh, that should be in progress as we speak. Uh, or it will be done very shortly because we have to get mobilized with respect to the reconstruction of that building. And so I would take it that before uh, this week is over or early next week, the building should be demolished if the contractor does what he's been asked to do. The Public Accounts Committee is meeting and resuming its probe into the operations of the Urban Renewal Small Homes Repair Program. 
The committee met this morning at the House of Assembly where four witnesses were expected to appear. They include the quantity surveyor, Ministry of Works staff and officers from Urban Renewal. The committee is investigating the operations of the Urban Renewal Commission following a report by the Auditor General Terence Bastian claiming there was no competitive bidding process and that 11 contractors were paid $171,000 for work that was either incomplete or not done. The PAC uh, concern basically is whether in fact um, Urban Renewal got value for money on the things that they invested in. Uh, you know, we've seen uh, overgrown properties that was raised, buildings was raised, or overgrown properties were, bushes were knocked down. Uh, the question is how much money was spent on those things. When we look at the small home repairs, the small home repairs are a very small thing as far as the monies that were spent uh, on a small home repair. When you look at Urban Renewal itself, you go back to 2012 and all, uh, t and to date probably we talking about an excess of $30 million that was spent on this program. So the question is whether there is accountability, transparency, and whether in fact the government got value for its money. An independent report found that almost 95% of all repairs were completed, and in many cases, the contractors went beyond the scope of works to affect repairs. The study, which was tabled in Parliament, also showed that the report was carried out by experts in the field of construction, and not accountants as was apparently done in the initial audit. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. This is your Royal Fidelity Business News. I'm Jiminita Swain. Deputy Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis set to deliver the keynote address at the Abaco Business Outlook set for September 24th. The Outlook